So I was at the dollar store, and usually I do everything like with more quality stuff, but I just wanted to try with some of the samples I've received from some of you. I wanted to try the brown rice with a mason jar. This is all dollar store stuff. So this jar was a dollar, this was a dollar, and we're gonna try to inoculate it. We're gonna put this little lid upside down on here, and we're not gonna use a pressure cooker. We're gonna just let it sit in a pan at low for two hours, and then once it cools down, the next day we're gonna try inoculating. Just to see how well it goes. I'm gonna be wearing gloves like the nitrile, nitrile <laughs> ones from Walmart, like the small 50 glove box and we'll be, you know, like sterilizing as best we can or just at least cleaning the best we can and we'll see how it goes. Also, I'm gonna show you real quick here how much rice it's gonna take. I think it's gonna expand quite a bit. You don't wanna cook the rice to where it's like splitting or, you know, actually cooked. You just wanna put it in some boiling water, bring it to a simmer for a little while and then use it like that just to soften it up a little bit. So let's switch over and see how much it's gonna take in this jar. So to show you here, 340 grains is what uh, I'm gonna be using here and this is where it's filled up to right there because it's going to expand. I want it to at least be up to the throat so I left just a little bit of wiggle room and that isn't a defined number I had in my head. That was just how much space I wanted to leave. So and that's almost half the bag. So we're going to try that. 340 grains. That's what this um, teared out though having the, uh, the actual mason jar. So that is the actual grain weight. That's not with the jar included. So just thought I'd include that for if you're curious how much to make in the boiling water. Now I am going to stir this, so we're going to add this in like this. Add that in, turn it all the way to low. That way it's it's going to be not going nuts. You know, it's not continuing to boil the, the daylights out of it. And yeah, we're going to stir that every three minutes or so. Okay, that's sat there for about 10 minutes on simmering. Feels really good. I think that's perfectly adequate, just enough to loosen them up, provide nutrients. But I put it in a strainer and I just sat there and I bounced it up and down. Not too tough because it will come flying out at you, but got all the excess water out of it. And uh, let's put it in the jar. So I was quite incorrect with my measurement here. 69 grams over <laughs> noise from what I originally started with. So you can see the rice is pretty much up to the end of the neck of the jar. So just minus that number that you had there, about 70 grams from what I started with. And I think you'll be good to go. So what I did was I took my vegetable steamer and I took off the hook in the middle so you can place up to four of these jars at the same time. So that's going to do the trick for you. So the next step is take your rice here, right? And uh, use some tin foil. Now this piece right here is a little too big, but whatever. You just tear off whatever covers the whole thing. One thing I wanted to show you, for example, is see this lid here? If it can move around like that, that's perfect. If it's too snug and you can't move it at all, that's a little too tight, move it. You can do it just whatever it doesn't have to be snug or whatever as long as you move this thing around a little bit that's perfect and this I just took it what it's not perfect and it's not like symmetrical or anything whatever this is just quick and easy so the next step is we're gonna want to turn this on a little over middle we're gonna see how that works for us for a little bit but the goal is really to, is to put it in here and uh, steam it for up to two hours. I believe it's two hours minimum. Definitely want to check on the water below it and things like that. Like you don't want it just boiling dry, you'll know. But three cups, we'll see how long that lasts. We'll get back to you. So it's been two hours. We're gonna turn it off. I had it on number four. We're gonna go over a couple temperatures here. So on the outside, at the base, the base we've got 204, 215. So that's the outside, right? Let's take this off. Let's see what we got inside. We're getting 163. Let's get down to the base, 184. Okay, so well over the bacteria killing level. Setting four on an electric stove for two hours is gonna do the trick. Now I'm just gonna let this sit in here and uh, cool off. So it's probably gonna be a number of hours because we do not want to put our spore or liquid culture into this because it's, it's gonna fry it too. So we're just gonna let this sit and cool off to room temperature. Now I will say before we get into it is that you do wanna be in a still air area or you wanna have a laminar flow hood once we uh, inoculate this, but I'm gonna try a couple different things, okay, to make this easy. I think if you're in a uh, like a still room and you had a nice big plastic sandwich bag, I think you could get away with uh, doing it in there. We'll, we'll try it out, we'll see. But definitely get yourself some gloves from Walmart and uh, you wanna put them on, make sure you got alcohol, 70% alcohol. The spray bottle will work nicely. And uh, yeah, you'll just clean everything up. 
Okay, it's the next day. It's cooled down. It's about 62 degrees Fahrenheit here. It's a cooler late spring afternoon. So what I'm going to do off camera, I'm, I'm going to inoculate it, but I'm actually going to keep it in here. I'm going to spray this down with alcohol and everything here as well. I'm going to inoculate it right in here and see how well it does. It's more susceptible to contamination without being in a still box or in a laminar flow like hooded area, but we're going to give it a shot and see how it goes. So it's all the way cool and uh, it's been sitting here over 12 hours. So... We'll let you know how it goes. So what we did was we took everything down. We wiped everything with alcohol and let it sit for just a little bit. I took the tin foil off right here, wiped it all down, wiped the pot down, wiped every little bit of it with 70% alcohol. You can just get it at Walmart with a um, one of these chicks towels. You can get these off of Amazon, a big box of them. It's like 35 bucks for a lot of them to last you <laughs> over a year plus. But I love these things. You just pull them out of the box, fully saturate it with the, the alcohol and then wipe stuff down. You can also get the spray version of this and spray it around and use this to wipe it up, but you can use this too as well. So you wipe the bottle down or the mason jar, every little thing on the outside, every little crevice you could get into just wipe down with alcohol and then I let it sit for maybe a minute or two and then I kind of use this I didn't record it because my tripod is being used for a time lapse for another strain I'm, I'm growing right now but I uh, was using this you know with my hand in it as kind of like a uh, still air chamber so we'll see if that works and we'll put in the video where it might have contamination or it may not uh, one thing we have to keep in mind is I didn't show anything about ventilation on the top but we'll deal with that a little later we'll see if we can get away with putting a hole in it afterwards after we have some mycelium growing there so yeah we'll check back about a week or so and see if she's growing and uh, see if we got any contamination i'm very curious because this is very not by the book if you will this is just kind of like seeing if it would work took a shot at it bought a couple things from the dollar store and uh tried it with like pan and boiling i've never done this before so we'll see how she comes out so it's been 10 days since the last video clip you saw there after we inoculated the grain and i've been shaking this for the last three days towards midday and it keeps growing back super well i'm really impressed by this strain actually this stuff grows so fast it, it actually was um starting to colonate like I think just four or five days after. It seems like 10 days is the uh, golden mark to look at stuff. Like, okay, how's it doing? And about two weeks after, you can check on it. What I did was, I don't even know how large this bit was. I just drilled a hole and got some of this uh, 3M paper or a uh, micro pour tape. Got it from a Walgreens. So we grabbed some of that, drilled a hole in the top, put it on there. And I've been shaking this and moving it around the uh, place here. And I thankfully have not seen any. I can't believe it. This is actually working out so well. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys, it's been three days since you uh, last saw this. For me, it's been three days, but for you, it's been instantaneous. And I've got to say, this stuff is insane. Three days. Literally, you can see this growing. Like, you leave your room for two hours or leave the, you know, the house for a couple hours. You come back and you would notice new growth. This is even more growth than this morning. I, I should have taken a picture each day and showed you this, but... After we mixed it in, just a couple little spots happened, and then it just exploded over the last two days. Even after the first day, there's a couple nodes. So I think these caps are really working because the moisture is really staying in there. So that's how it looks right now. We'll give you an update in another three days. We'll put another clip onto the entire video and show you how it's going. So it's actually been 21 days since the last clip. It would have been sooner, but I ran into some issues with uh, panicking. What I did was I thought I had overlay with this. I was going to do some updates in between on the channel and just I kind of went into a little panic mode there because I thought the overlay was I was done for like it was just too built up. I was out at my dad's doing work for three days away from my current location and so I wasn't in fruiting conditions so I just kept colonizing and it got really fluffy and uh, I was like oh no that's overlay and I just read you know that's what I read I'm like what's going on with this why is it so fluffy and this and that. So I went crazy and I fork teched it, which means you sanitize a fork, you scrape all, all the overlay down or all the really extremely fluffy stuff. So I did that and I put another half an inch of substrate after I was uh, getting my albino PEs together in the other monotub. <sighs> so needless to say, I did two days of research and uh, <laughs> I found out that I actually jumped the gun, panicked too hard, and didn't really need to, to scratch the surface. Really what I should have done is had the caps off sooner, been misting the crap out of this container, which I have been, as you can see. All sides, top, and even before these uh, mushrooms were pushing up through, that's why you don't see much mycelium now. On top, and you see mushrooms, is because there's a huge, really nice layer of mycelium below this. And it's just starting to colonize now, as you can see on the corners. 
it was fully colonized and then some and it was just it looked like overlay so but that's okay i learned a lot so yes you can use very cheap beginnings to get going you don't need to go nuts with 3d printed stuff or microprose filters you can use micropore tape there's a bunch of cheaper things you can do use a plastic black liner trash bags for liners and stuff like that you don't have to go nuts at all you can just cut holes in a sterilite that you get from walmart do all this stuff get the cocoa choir vermiculite and gypsum from amazon it's pretty cheap or you can buy the kit from Boomer Shroomer which is $14.99. You don't have to pay for shipping but overall I think her mix is very nice. My stuff that I bought off Amazon put together whatever it smelled very I don't know it didn't smell natural it smelled more like chemicals from the cocoa choir so her mix is going to give you a really nice easy to use mix and it's just going to go really well for you and that's what her, her substrate is on top here. So wrapping this up, I went off track, but I just wanted to show you that you can do this with you know, dollar store rice and mason jars to get at least get a colony going. I highly recommend this Halo X strain, which was gifted to me through ordering through Boomer Shroomer, and it was an experiment. I didn't have any hard feelings if I really trashed this uh, grow, but it was actually my first, now it's turned into my first actual uh, mushroom spot, <laughs> or you know, my first real growth. The APE is still in their monotub, and it's going to be another week or so before we see anything. Thanks for catching the video, guys. We'll have more of a, a linear uh, how-to video in the future, but this was an experiment because a lot of folks are like, no, you can't do this, no, you can't do this, and I, I'm just, I'm very curious myself to see what you can get away with growing this because when I first jumped into this hobby, I was like, man, you know, I was terrified of contamination and this and that, and it's very real. You definitely don't have to go as ham, if you will, I'll use that term, as I thought you did. One thing I want to apologize too is that uh, I didn't show you a lot of stuff, like loading stuff in and out of the mason jar, inoculation, mixing uh, the mushrooms or the mycelium, you know, colonization into the substrate. So we'll also include that in future videos as well. I just kind of jumped around and did a lot of my own thing. So we'll have more of that in the future. So yeah, stay tuned for other videos pertaining to how to grow mushrooms and other things of that sort. Thanks for watching guys. Take care.